If you've got a premium saw, it's going to have to eventually be sharpened. One of the keys to sharpening is having a good vise. You can't always buy them. I'm going to show you how to build this one. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> It wasn't that long ago that every town had somebody who sharpened saws professionally. But that is no longer. So if you're into woodwork and you enjoy sawing your joints and you have good saws, as I mentioned, you're going to have to learn how to do this yourself if you want it to be done properly. Um, a vice is critical. Yes, you have to have a good file, whatever else, but you've got to be able to support your work properly. Now, this is an idea that I got from Tay Frid in one of his books. And if you don't know who Tay Frid is, you should do some research on him because I think Tay is one of the founding, um, I shouldn't say founding, but he certainly is one of the ones that made woodworking popular in North America. I'm going to make a vise that's custom to my saw. So this is my longest back saw and I need to support the blade over 12 inches. But I also want to be able to do the dovetail saw. And coming in underneath the handle is a very narrow area, so I've got to be able to access that as well. So I'm going to use, I was going to use this plywood, but I've actually got some Baltic birch, which is a better quality plywood, and I needed something a little bit wider anyway. So I am going to modify this somewhat. I want to make it a little bit longer. So I think we'll go in and we'll make those pieces 14. And since I have a blade that's 12 inches wide, so I'm gonna get two pieces of plywood, 14 by 12. We'll have the grain running in this direction. And then we'll get two strips of hardwood and they need to be the same width because it's that the purpose of those is so that that sits level. So we'll need two pieces of hardwood, approximately three quarter by three quarter, and they're gonna be the same width, which will be 12 inches. Then we need two pieces up in here and we've got to modify those jaws so when it comes together that's nice and flat they're not touching at the top or touching at the bottom and they properly support that blade so it doesn't vibrate of course we need a piece of piano hinge and we'll cut that to be the same length and it's going to be 12 inches we'll get all those pieces gathered up and we'll come back to the bench and we'll go to work and putting them together okay i'm going to take this over to the table saw and I'm going to do a couple things to each one of these pieces. I'm going to cut a 45 degree bevel right here on the ends. And that just allows you to get a little bit closer to the work instead of having this way out here. So do that on both ends. And then on the inside, just for the sake of being able to um, index it a little bit better, I'm going to cut uh, a little trough or just a little rabbit on the table saw just the, the width of this leaf and only in maybe just the thickness of it. And that'll just help so that it'll line up both pieces when we go to put this piano hinge on. Then we'll come over. I've cut these, I've rough cut these, but I'll clean these up on the shooting board just to make them nice and neat. And then from there, we can start putting pieces together.
Okay, I'm just going to clean up this inside line with the marking gauge. install both of those pieces and I think it's okay that we do that first then we can go ahead and put these put the uh, outside strip on that's going to hold it in place we'll determine how high we want it and then we can install the strip on the inside that we're going to have to do a little bit of work with in order to get that to lay perfectly flat against the saw I'll grab some screws now if you've never seen one of these this um, is spring-loaded and this also spins, which in this case we don't want it to spin. What it'll do is it'll go in there and it'll center that. And then as you push down, the drill engages. I'm going to keep that flush that side. And just gives you a little bit of a pilot hole. I'm going to use some half inch number six screws. Notice that I'm doing these by hand, and I find that if you use a power bit, something like this and a drill, especially when you've got a small screw and you're going into plywood, it's too easy to apply too much torque, and the next thing you know you strip it. So you do it by hand. It's not a very, uh, it's a short screw, so it doesn't take a lot to put it in, but you can tell when it's tightening and keeps you from, as I said, stripping it out. You know, you know what? We're actually going to have to go in there and countersink those. Shoot, because that's not going to close enough. Well, I got to take those all back out and I got to go in with a countersink bit and sink those down in. Shoot. Okay, I finished countersinking those, and now that closes the way we want. So our next move is to put on these strips on the inside. And we're gonna glue them to the up top edge, we want them flush on the end. And then we're eventually gonna have to, after the glue's dried, we're gonna have to go in and we're gonna have to shape them with the plane so that they close tight. Because of the fact that there's a bit of an angle involved right now, they, they aren't tight. And it's going to be difficult to clamp them because you don't have anything to clamp to with that 45. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use a piece of steel rod. You could use dowel, wooden dowel if you had to. So let's get this in place first. This is a little more than I wanted. I don't want to use any metal fasteners here because I need to go in with the plane and shape those. I'm just looking to see if I planed both edges. This inside is right off of the saw, but that's okay because that's all going to be removed. Now, I'm just going to put a piece of tape. Actually, if I can get it up here on the top side, it'd be even better.
I'm going to put this steel rod right in the middle. This is just a piece of uh, piece of eighth inch welding rod. So nothing special. We just need it to distribute the force evenly when we clamp this. So I'm putting the tape on just to keep it in the middle. Now we'll get this one done while the glue's starting to set up on. Okay, now we squeeze that together and put some clamps on there. That steel welding rod will apply the pressure right in the middle of that piece of hardwood so you'll have even clamping pressure. If we didn't do that, then because this is narrower at the bottom, wider at the top, we'd only be touching on the inside and we wouldn't get a good glue surface out near the end. So what we need to do is plane this surface of these two pieces of wood on the angle that we would get running from the center of that pin out to the far corner. So it doesn't require a lot. But you can tell there's a little more off the inside than there is on the outside. And I wonder if we can do that just by... I thought about actually getting another piece of wood that we could rest that side of the plane on, but I think... I think we can just do it like this. So the first thing I want to do is... is just plane this smooth. So just go until we get a... Full width shave, full length shaving. One more pass. Now check that and see what we got. Okay, so I'm taking off more on this side than on than on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my finger underneath the fence, underneath the plane, so that it'll stay. piece of wood will stay in the same position on the blade. So if you look at the shaving, I'm taking a heavy cut from the inside and I'm not quite touching the outside yet. Okay, take a look. So we have a little more ink out here than we do there, which means I may have taken off, I obviously took off a little bit too much, but just see what this one looks like in terms of matching it up. Get that right in the middle. So that might do it. Let's just, uh, put it down in here and see. So the real test will be when we actually put the blade in there, is it going to be tight and is it going to hold it? And while I've got it there, I'm just going to plane that top, make it nice and even. I'll just come in and get rid of some of those beads of glue. Oops, let's get that blade back in the right spot.
Okay, one more. So you saw we had a full width shaving. Now what I'm gonna do is just clean these up and I'll plane in from this end. You can see the color change between a plane surface and a sawn surface. This looks neater. We need a little more blade. Now I did that so that I can come in from the other side and not have to worry about blowing off the end grain portion out there. Now we'll just clean these up. I'll use, I'll cut the excess off with a flush trim saw. Anytime you're playing across like that, you're going to end up tearing these fibers on the back side. If I take a really shallow pass, I might get away with it. That's good. Now that we've got these lined up and they're mating just the way we want, I decided instead of cutting this away, which really takes a lot of strength out of it. I was looking at it and I thought, why couldn't we just, just using a, a router, route the profile into here, which would maintain the uh, plywood on the backside because we don't have to go that deep. And uh, that would allow us to keep this intact, still be able to slide that in, have just enough exposure. Now, because the difference in the two saws is quite, dramatic in terms of where the handle is in relation to where the tooth line is. On the other side of this, I'll, I'll, route, a different, I'll route a different placing for this handle and then we can get both out of the one. I'd like to be able to get all three and I need to take a look at that as well. So if we set this in here, we want to get the entire blade We've got enough room for the brass back, so we don't have to worry about that. It's just, we've got to probably go a quarter, maybe five sixteenths of an inch deep in order to catch the handle. So, and it doesn't need to be exact. So I'm gonna say we need to go from about there. And I would go from here, but we've got to catch this too, so. So if we come over to here, now, the problem is with this one, we're going to be up quite a bit closer. In fact, I've got to come right to this. So if we put this one in, I guess what we would need to do is come right like that. So if we were to take all of that area out, we should be able to get both saws in there. All right, now I've got this in the way. So I'll put another piece of wood, approximately the same thickness. I added a base just because the base on this was very small. I added an extra base onto there, so I'll be able to ride on the two of those. So I just need to tack that in place. In fact, I can probably do that with some masking tape. I won't go up here just because it'll end up pulling it. Okay, we'll secure this in place. Make sure the uh, bench dog is down low enough so it won't get... Now. So we're cutting about 3 eighths of an inch and I think that's going to be fine. I don't want to have to come back and do it again. And I'm just going to follow this line as best I can. Make it plenty dark.
best to always cut against the rotation. But what I was saying is when you first come in there, uh, you sometimes find you're cutting all the way around the bit. But uh, what I'll do, it's rotating this way. I'm going to start here and I'll just keep going back and forth until we get it. Okay, let's see if that fits. So that allows us to keep the tenon saw, the medium tenon, right up to the line. I could take just a little more off right there. Check the dovetail. Lots of room for the dovetail. Okay, I'm just gonna take that last little bit. Now, do the same thing on this side. No great way of copying it, so we'll just Guess at it. Okay, that looks about the same. So we'll do the exact same thing with this one. Okay. Okay, that holds that just exactly the way we want. Excuse me, medium tenon. Same thing. Now, I'm gonna do the same rut out, or cut out over here for the larger saw, and it'll just be a, same, a version of that, only just a little bit deeper. Now, next thing to do is to put our cleats on. And we can put them, oh, they don't really need to be any uh, specific height, but whatever is gonna be comfortable. I'll look at the last one and see. This one kept us about four inches above the vise. So if we put them right there, that would we need a mark nine and a quarter up from the bottom. Trim these at 12 inches, they're a little bit long. Okay. I'm not gonna glue these on, simply because there's never know, you might need to take them off for some reason. So what we'll do is mark them first, probably four screws on there would be good. So we'll come in oh, about an inch from the end. Inch. And then divide 10 by 3, so 3 and a third, so we go about uh, 6, uh, 3 and 3 eighths, 7 and, or 6 and 3 quarter, that's good spacing. Now, I'm just going to put a clamp on there to hold it. I'll have to move the clamp to get that last one in. This does serves two purposes. When you put it in your vise, it keeps it from falling on the floor. 
but then it automatically gives you uh, level. And I'm going to use number six screws, but particularly going through something hard like maple, I want to counter bore first so that none of the thread from the screw actually engages the maple. Instead, it'll just go into the plywood and pull tight. that in the vise. Grab our saw to be sharpened. Open the jaws. Slip that in. You want those teeth about uh, oh eighth of an inch maximum. Now that's good and secure. Perfect. Obviously you're going to need to modify your vise to fit your bench. I have a Scandinavian shoulder vise which gives me unobstruct unobstructed area between the jaws, so I just slide it in there. You can also do that with a moxen vise. If you don't, if you have a more of a traditional vise, if you've got extended jaws, you can still do it. Simply put your saw into place, get your proper exposure. Now when you clamp it, you're only gonna be squeezing one half, so if you can come in here with a, another clamp, just put a little bit of pressure on the side, and you're good to go, that'll hold it securely. Your, another option is to shorten this a little bit. Now even at this height, that's still holding it securely enough that you can go in and file, sharpen your saw. If it's too high for you, you could simply shorten this. As I mentioned, I made mine 12 by 14 and you could easily cut it down to here, which would work with a much shorter application. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.